All right, welcome to the JavaScript loops crash course. We're going to start by learning about while loops so that we can repeat code. Um, so we've got the crash course here. We've got some notes on loops. We're going to learn about the while loop and the for loop, how we can use code to re our loops to repeat code a set number of times or an unknown number of times, and we'll look at nested loops. But in this video, we're going to start with while loops. So to do that, we're just going to make a little sample program, CS10 basic training, create a new REPL, and I'm just going to call this loops sandbox. We're going to play around with loops inside of here. And uh, yeah, so we'll start with the, the while loop. And the main idea here is we're going to want to repeat code. And we're just going to use the console for now. Um, and with a while loop, what I, I really think of a while loop as an if statement, right? Similar to an if statement. If something is true, do what's between these brackets. Well, a while loop, we do the same type of structure, except we replace if with while, right? While something is true, do what's between these brackets, okay? So that's my, my loop body goes inside of here, and there's some sort of condition that I test, just like an if statement. But an if statement will just do it once, whereas a while loop will m repeat multiple times. Um, now, inside of this condition, we need something to test. So I'm going to create a variable called num, and we'll just initialize it to 1. And I can do things like while num is less than or equal to 5, right? While that's true, I want to do something. Well, for now, let's just print to the console, log to the console. And so this should say num is 1, 1 is less than or equal to 5. Yes, it is, so it'll do this. But then because it's a while loop, it'll repeat, right? So num is still 1, 1 is less than or equal to 5, so it'll do this, and we would get ourselves into an infinite loop. Okay, so something important is we have to make sure we update the value of num. So I'm just going to increase it by 1. So we can go num plus 1, or a shorter form of that is plus equals 1, or even shorter yet, because programmers are lazy, num plus plus. And that should give us 1 to 5, right? Num is 1, that's true, so printed it out. Num became 2, 2 is less than 5, so printed it out. Num became 3, printed it out, 4. Five, and then once it became 6, 6 is no longer less than or equal to 5, so that's false. So it stopped the loop and continued the program, which is nothing. Okay, so that's the main idea here. We initialize a variable, we test that variable, and then we do something, and then we update that variable. And now we can play around with this, right? I could make this 50, and it would loop from 1 up to 50, right? 1 to 50 like that. Um, we can change this value to 10 and it would loop from 10 to 50. We could say, hey, instead of increasing by one, let's go plus equals 10, and it'll count by tens, right? So really, this is our start value. This is our start, our stop value, and this is our step value, right? What it changes by. And you can also do um, decreasing patterns, right? I could test, hey, if num is greater than or equal to one, and now I wanna decrease. So num minus minus would decrease by 1. So 10 is greater than 1. Yep, so we print it out, decrease it to 9. 9 is greater, and that should loop all the way down to 1. And then I can, once the loop is done, say blast off. And we just did a little countdown timer. Blast off. Okay, so you can do decreasing patterns as well. Now, a couple um, common mistakes that can happen with loops. Um, what if we had forgot to switch this and kept it as a less than or equal to, right? Well, what you'll see is it does nothing. Well, it did the blast off, but basically it didn't do anything inside of the loop because this condition is false, right? 10 is not less than or equal to one, so this is false. So it never runs the loop and just continues on. Okay, so sometimes that you'll be like, why isn't my loop doing anything? It's, it's usually so it has to do with this condition. Um, another common mistake is to forget this part. Now, before I show you that, I just want to open this. This console isn't quite as good as the Google Chrome console. So I'm going to just open up this program and have the console here. Refresh, so there we go. Um, now what I'm going to show you is if we forget to update the variable, to do the num minus minus, what's going to happen is this num is going to stay at 10, which means this condition will always be true which means this loop will continue to run infinitely. Okay, so let's see what that does. 
So I hit refresh, and sure enough, num stays at 10. That loop just keeps on going 6,000, 7,000, thousands of times. It's printing off 10. This thing's still spinning here. My browser is basically stuck, right? Like I can't try to, oh, can I type commands? Oh, well, I can, but it's, it's laggy and it's not cool. I can try to, oh yeah, see it's even here. Stop loading this page because it's stuck in this infinite loop. All right, so you might run across that. Usually what's happening with an infinite loop is you're forgetting to, to update the value. Anyway, let's oh, see if you even close the console because it's like, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, oh, I can't even close it. Oh, no, there we go, good. Had to hit it twice. So anyway, infinite loops just bog down your, um, bog down your browser. Not a good thing. Okay, so make sure you update and you should be good to go. Okay, so that's the main idea, right? While loops, well, some condition is true, do this. We use these variables to update and we can repeat code. Okay, that's it for while loops. In the next uh, video, we'll talk about for loops. All right, hope that made sense. Take care and see you in the next video.